Hello friend, I'm Rich Stocks. This is Prayer School. Today we're going to talk about right and wrong praying. Stay there. I'll be right back. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of life. Shadow of turning or changing his mind. Hello friend, I'm Rich Stocks from the Healthy Christian Broadcast. In 1997, I heard a cassette tape by Dr. Joel Wallet called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Dr. Wallach teaches that we all have the potential to live healthy lives well beyond the age of 100 and if you give your body what it needs, it will do amazing things. I want to invite you to join millions of people who've already heard Dr. Wallach's life-changing message. Now you can hear this message free of charge on our website at mineraldoctor.com. Here are three simple steps you can take right now to put you on the path to a longer, healthier life. Listen to Dr. Wallach's message. Schedule your free health evaluation. Schedule a free phone consultation. We have an experienced team of people standing by ready to help you with your health and well-being. Free wellness teaching, free health evaluation, free phone consultation, all found at mineraldoctor.com. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you reach your full healthy potential. Hello friend, before we get into the lesson today, I want to encourage you to act on Galatians 6 verse 6 and that is this. If you're being blessed by this ministry, I want to encourage you to do what that verse says and sow into this ministry. Become a part. That's what a partner is, someone who has a part in something. You can take part with me in sending this word, this teaching, all around the world. We have a broadcast that covers the entire continent of Africa. And let me tell you, I don't know how to say it any other way. The cost is dirt cheap. I mean, compared with what we pay in other places and your dollar, it really goes a long way. The potential audience, and of course that doesn't mean that's many are watching, but the potential viewing audience in Africa alone through the network that we're on is one b -b 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 billion people. Not million, one billion with a B. And so for anyone who sows any seed into this ministry, and I know some of you God's dealing with you to do that, I want to send you my book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. You're going to need this in the days and weeks and months ahead because there's a whole lot of shaking going on, as the song says. Well, we've been in this series called Prayer School for many, many weeks, many sub-series. We just finished one called What Do You Do After You Pray? I am so excited about this one today. If you're half as excited, if you're, if you're one-third as excited about watching and listening today as I am to be here teaching you, let me tell you, you're in good place to receive from God. We're going to talk about right and wrong praying, misconceptions and misunderstandings about prayer. You say, Brother Rich, what do you mean by wrong praying? Well, let's look at this. We saw many weeks ago in Luke chapter 11, I'm not going to turn there today or read the verse, but a disciple heard Jesus praying and one of the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Well, there's a lot that we said. Go back and watch those videos. As soon as Jesus was asked to teach them how to pray, he began teaching. He didn't begin exhorting. He didn't say, I... Ah, you know all you need to know. It doesn't matter how you pray, just pray. When this disciple came and asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus immediately began to teach them how to pray. Well, there's a lot we can learn from that. Think about this. He didn't just exhort them to pray. He taught them how to pray. We hear a lot of exhortation about prayer. Here's what that word exhort means. I looked it up just for the sake of today's lesson. <clears throat> we hear it a lot, you know, prayer and exhortation. Here's what the word exhort means. It means to urge, to admonish, to recommend, or to warn. A pastor friend of mine says uh, exhorting simply means you're encouraging someone to do 
what they already know how to do. You're not teaching them how to do it. You're exhorting them to do it. And so here's what we usually hear. We ought to pray more. Anyone heard that? Did you hear it last Sunday at church? We ought to pray more. People, we need to pray. It's important that we pray. And I do believe it's important that we pray. But that's exhortation. What if, the, what if, you, if you're believing for new converts to come in your church, Pastor, do you have prayer school at your church? You better send them to this online prayer school where they can learn how to pray. And I understand a pastor's got to cover a lot of topics. I've pastored a church before. The people in Africa still call me pastor. Bless your heart, guys. We love you. I'm not pastoring a church right now. You can call me whatever you want to call me. That's, that's just that's what they call you. If you minister the Word of God, you're to them, you're a pastor. Maybe some of you, in that sense, I am, you know, an online pastor. I'm one of your teachers, perhaps. So I'm not pastoring a church. I want to make that clear, but I have pastored. <clears throat> so I'm not saying I know a lot about it, but a little bit. And I understand a pastor is a, a general practitioner. You can't just teach one thing. I have a few topics. God is, has, he has me teaching on spiritual, physical, financial well-being. Now, you can cover a lot of ground with that, pastors, in your church. But one of those, if you're going to have spiritual, physical, and financial well-being, you need to know how to pray. So it's not enough just to come in every Sunday and exhort the people, we need to pray. We ought to pray harder. We ought to pray longer. Or here's one, here's what's going to happen if we don't pray. Well, what are you doing? You're urging, you're admonishing, you're recommending, and you're warning, but you're not teaching. There's a big difference. And pastor, if you're not a teacher, I hope you bring teachers through, through your pulpit, that you're not afraid of, you know, yeah, you got to check them out and be in a relationship. I understand how these things work. But if you're not a teacher, then I hope you have people in your church who are helping you, pastor, by teaching because the number one job of a pastor, none of this. Every week we get started, guys, and I start saying things that aren't in my notes. I'm not going to get mad at the Lord because this is His deal. It's not mine and however He wants to go. It's just interesting. You get all of these notes and He starts leading you these different directions and you're like, Lord, why didn't you show me all of that before I printed the notes? But the, the main job of a pastor is to feed the flock of God. Feed, lead, and oversee. And all of those involve the Word of God. Feed them the Word of God. Lead them to the green pastures of the Word of God. And oversee them that they are becoming doers of the Word of God. Living according to the Word of God. Feeding, leading, overseeing is the job of a pastor. And you do all of that with the Word of God. I've been in churches before where this book didn't have much place. Hey, you know, it's all about the move of the Spirit. Well, thank God for the move of the Spirit. But if you don't have the Word of God, you're going to have other spirits come in your church and start moving. So the word exhort means to urge, admonish, recommend, and warn. So we hear far less teaching on prayer and a lot more exhortation about prayer. But since Jesus, when this disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray, Jesus did not exhort them. He said, well, guys, you ought to pray. He began to teach them how. That is what prayer school is all about. I'm here today. You may think you know how well. How many of your prayers are getting answered? I am here to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, since I have started documenting my prayers, my, I will never pray another prayer that I document, I'm talking about me asking for something for me, not me asking for my favorite candidate to become president. That's not me asking for something me. There's hundreds of millions of other voters and prayers. People may be praying the opposite. <laughs> I hope not. But if you are, the Lord, He'll show you, all right? who to pray for, who to vote for, all of those sorts of things. I'm talking about me asking God for something for me. I can't receive for you, I can't receive for my children, for my grandchildren, but I can have anything I want. I can, if I ask God and I believe and I ask in faith and I stay in faith, I will have it. And so I've started documenting my prayers so that way I can document the day I possess whatever it is I'm praying for. And it, it works for me, it will work for you every time. There are no exceptions. 
You will never pray a prayer in faith and stay in faith and not receive the manifestation of what you prayed for. Never. It's not possible. And if it is, Jesus lied to all of us. And we must well throw this whole book away. We better keep going. So we hear a lot of exhortation on prayer. And you may think you know how to pray. But let me tell you, you get in the Word of God, you will find out how much you don't know. The more I study on prayer, the more I realize, Lord, I thought I knew this, I thought I knew that. What do I know? There was a, a show on television many years ago, Hogan's Heroes, for those of you in the good old USA of a certain age. I'm giving my age away here for sure. And the colonel on there, he always says, I know nothing, I know nothing. Well, the Apostle Paul himself, the Holy Spirit through Paul said, if any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing as he ought to know. Wow. About the time you think you're starting to know something from the Word of God, tell yourself, I don't know anything as well as I could and should and as well as I will by the grace of God. Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. He's leading us into more truth every week on prayer. So since Jesus began to teach them, listen to this, since they asked Him, teach us how to pray, He immediately began to teach them. That tells me immediately there's a right way to pray. You can't teach somebody something unless there's a right way to do it and a wrong way. Teach me how to shoot a gun. That means there's a right way to shoot a gun, a weapon they call them. There's a right way to shoot a weapon and a wrong way. I taught my two sons how to shoot a basketball. They both became much better at it than me, than I ever was. One especially, he really worked at it and became really, really good, still really good. Played in high school, you know, made in one of the top scores that ever came through that high school. Played in college, praise God for it. We spent a lot of time, and then if I'd notice if a few weeks go by where I wasn't there, he'd start his shot would get goofy. There's a right way to shoot a basketball, then there must be a wrong way. If, there's, if Jesus started teaching them how to pray, there's a right way to pray, and there's a wrong way to pray. And that's the way it is with everything. There's a, there's a correct way and an incorrect. So we'll say this, if you pray correctly, yes, Lord, I'll say that, you will pray more effectively. Let me say that again. If you learn to pray correctly, you will pray more effectively. If you continue to pray incorrect, incorrectly, your prayers will be less effective. Correct praying is more effective praying. Incorrect praying is less effective. So Jesus taught both the right way to pray and the wrong way. So we're going to look at some of the things. Today I'm calling this lesson, Don't Pray Like This. Here's some things that Jesus said specifically. When you pray, don't pray like this. Wow, it doesn't get much better than that. That's Him teaching us, isn't it? So He taught them there in Luke chapter 11 some things how to pray. But then in other places where we're getting ready to look, in Matthew's account, he taught them how not to pray. Don't pray like this. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. Here we go. Jesus said, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray. Well, there's an interesting statement, isn't it? A well-known Bible teacher, I won't call his name here because I don't want to give the impression, you know, that, that he knows me or, you know, I like his teaching. He may not have ever heard mine. I think he would like it, but I don't want to say his name and make you think that we're connected and then I say something, you know, that disagrees with something he's teaching, whatever. Hopefully that makes sense. But there's a well-known minister, and I like him a lot. And he brought this to my attention one time I was watching him teach on television. And he said, notice hypocrites love to pray. Well, I'd never really, I've read that verse hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times. I've read the book of Matthew probably more than any other book in the New Testament because you start, you're going to read it over. You may not get all the way through the New Testament, then start again at Matthew, start again at Matthew. I've read that book a lot, Proverbs probably more than any book. And then the next would be the book of Matthew because it's the first book in what we call the New Testament. But Jesus said, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray. Notice that. Hypocrites love to pray. Wow, i got to keep moving, but I could stay on that for a while. 
hypocrites love to pray. It says they love to pray. <laughs> when this guy was telling the story, he said his kid came downstairs. He had been watching the man on television teaching. <clears throat> and he came down and he said to his mom and dad, Dad, you're a hypocrite. He said to his mom, Mom, you're a hypocrite. And they're like, what young kid? Elementary age. What are you talking about? They said, I was just watching. So I almost have said his name a half a dozen times here. Lord, help me. But he said, I was just watching so-and-so on television. And he said, hypocrites love to pray. And mom and dad, you both love to pray. So you're hypocrites. Well, <laughs> that's not what we're saying. But Jesus did say, hypocrites love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets. Notice this, that they may be seen of men. They love to pray to be seen by other people. <clears throat> Hypocrites love to pray to be seen and heard by other people. It said, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. What is their reward? Their reward is that people say, Oh, man, isn't he an eloquent prayer? I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I have an opportunity to stand up and teach God's Word, I get excited. Because I realized that without Him, Jesus said, without me you could do nothing. I had the greatest fear of public speaking. I'm not going to go into that right now. It was not just a little fear. It was gargantuan. I planned, <clears throat> I tried to find a college that I could go to and get a degree without taking a speech class. And now this is what I do. Even in my business, I've stood in front of groups and large groups, small, many groups, thousands of times. I've stood in front of people and you add all these television broadcasts, many thousands. And I'm excited about it. But I'm going to be honest with you. Every time I'm asked to pray in front of other people, that same fear grips me. And it's more than just a fear. The reason fear would grip you is because you are aware that you're praying in front of other people. I pray at home. I'm certainly, I talk to my father. He's my dad. He's my Abba father. Oh, we spent many weeks on that. Go back and watch those videos. He is daddy God. Close, intimate, personal relationship. The closest word we have in our English language is daddy. He is my Abba father. And I talk to him like He's my father with respect, but as if he is my daddy, God. But when I'm asked to pray in front of other people, I do it. I'm not going to tell them no, and I'm not going to tell the Lord no. But I do not, I dread it, so to speak. It's a fear. And one of the reasons is because of this verse. We are not to pray to be seen and heard. Well, it's hard to pray in front of other people without at least having somewhat of a conscience, conscious awareness that you're speaking into the ears of other people. When you're home by yourself, we're going to talk about that, praying in your closet, and you can just talk to your father. He already knows everything about you. You don't have to get weird, change your voice, act, do all these things that we're going to address today. You don't change his name from God to God. Wow, we're going to talk about these things today. <laughs> changing your tone of voice, changing your emotion. No, talk to Him. He's your Father. He already knows what you have need of. Jesus said, don't pray like this. Don't pray to be seen by men. Now, that means several things. Number one, don't pray to impress them. That's what He says here. Don't be like a hypocrite and you pray to be seen of men. You'll have your reward, but that reward is them thinking you're a really good prayer or you're really smart or you got a great vocabulary or you got a nice deep voice because you changed it and you changed his name from God to God and all of those sorts of things. You'll have your reward. Men, pat you on the back. Had a lady one time pat me on the back after my sermon. Man, Brother Richards grabbed me. She almost beat a blue spot on my back and then she stopped payment on her check. That's another story. Oh, it's unbelievable some of these things. The Lord, they make great testimonies. It was not fun when it happened. So notice that hypocrites love to pray and they love to pray to be seen. Their motive. So in other words, don't pray to impress other people. 
That's the first thing Jesus taught. How do you know if you're doing this? Let me just give you a few. I've already said one. First, are you changing your tone of voice? Are you changing God's name from God to God? Are you putting vibrato, well, Lord? You know, are you doing those things? If you are, ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? You hear people doing it. It's not as prevalent today. When I was growing up, oh my goodness, our dear God and gracious Heavenly Father. Now, if you pray that way at home, fine. Pray that way in public. I'm not telling you how to pray. I'm telling you what Jesus said, don't pray to be seen or heard by other people. And it's, it's not easy when you're asked to pray in front of a group or lead a group. I'm going to be honest, this isn't easy. There's at least some awareness, at least for me, unless you've totally overcome this. If so, teach me how to do it. To where you can totally overcome the idea there's other people listening to me. So we got to keep going. Are you changing your tone of voice? Are you speaking in King James English? The thou. If you do that all the time with God, fine. Do it in public. If not, don't change your voice in public. Don't change your vocabulary. Are you pretending to be someone you're not? That's what a hypocrite is. It, it means someone who wears a mask, a pretender. Are you acting weird, we could say. Don't act weird when you pray. That would be a good title for a sermon or a lesson. Or are you simply talking to God as if you're having a conversation? That is what prayer is, a conversation with God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1 through 4 it's not about prayer, but this would apply. Paul talking about his preaching. He said, I, brethren, I didn't come to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. As Paul even said, I, I'm taking, we're talking about prayer. Don't pray to impress others, to be seen or heard of them. But here, Paul even said in his preaching, I didn't come with words to try to impress you. Teaching should be to teach them, help them, help them come up, not to impress them. i got to keep moving. Let's look at this in another uh, translation. The complete Jewish Bible said, As far as me, brothers, when I arrived among you, it was not with surpassing eloquence. He didn't try to use fancy speech. The Phillips translation, he said, I did not, I did not come equipped with any brilliance of speech or intellect. The message says, I didn't try to impress you, here it is, with polished speeches. I've heard people, there have been a handful of people say, Brother Rich, you're just so polished. Well, let me tell you, I don't try to be polished. You know, sometimes you're preaching, spits flying. I got little spatters all over my glass table here. I told my wife, in my car. Sometimes, you know, you're talking on the phone, on the speaker phone. Then what's that? It's not dust. It's not coming off. Well, that's where you're spitting. Well, that's not being polished. I don't think a polished person shouldn't, there shouldn't be any spit flying. Well, sometimes that happens, guys. So it's not that I try to be polished. I've had a few people say there's some who don't think I am polished enough and some think that I am. Well, don't compare yourselves among yourself, but don't make it your point to try to be polished for the sake of impressing people. Try to impress upon them the truth of the Word of God. Impress upon them truth. I teach like I'm in a court of law and that I have to defend what I'm saying. I have to prove to you that it's true. I have to convince you that that is how the Lord leads me to teach. Teach as if you have to prove it by the Word of God. Not with one scripture, not with two, but with a pile of scriptures. So he said, I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches or the latest philosophy. The New American Standard said, I did not come as someone superior in speaking ability. Now here's another thing. So Jesus said, don't pray to impress people. But here's another, here's another thing you've got to watch. Praying in front of other people to drop hints. Oh, I felt, what was that word? I got that heavenly vibes. I used to say goosebumps. I felt heavenly vibes all over my skin when I said that. People, you can pray to be seen or heard to impress people, but you also can pray to be seen and heard so you can drop hints to other people so that those people will come to your aid. So in other words, let's just say, people will post on Facebook, please pray for me, my rent's overdue. Don't do that. D don't do that. What are you doing? You are doing what Jesus said not to do. 
I'm not telling you that you cannot have other people pray for you, but the best prayer we're going to look at here in a moment is the one you pray in your prayer closet all by yourself. Don't pray to drop hints. Don't kneel down by the rich, richest guy in church. Oh, Lord, you see this financial need. I pray you'll speak to somebody, Lord, somebody. You know, you're know, you popping your head toward the rich guy. Don't do that. You're making them your source. James 1 verse 17 says, Every good gift, this is at the beginning of all of our broadcasts, that's my wife singing that song. I wrote that song from this verse right here. It says, Every good gift, one and only. I have one and only source of all that is good. There's only one and only source in my life. And it's right here in James 1 17. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of light. And then Matthew 6 verse 5 and 6 after Jesus says don't pray like this. Don't pray to be seen or heard of men. You could be praying to impress them or to drop hints. Both. One is just as wrong as the other. He said when you pray enter into your closet and when you have shut the door. Every time I start teaching this, he says, pray to your father in secret. Your father which sees in secret will, we, will reward you openly. Every time I start teaching this, somebody tries to come from Eve. I even have friends. They like my teaching. They believe. But every time I start talking about praying in secret, well, I just think there's something about having other people pray. What did Jesus say, my brother and sister? It doesn't matter what you think and what I think and all this religious stuff. It doesn't matter. People, you can, can argue with me. You're not arguing with me. You're arguing with Jesus himself. If Jesus were standing right here, he would say to you, when you pray, enter your closet, shut the door, pray in secret, and my Father will reward you openly. That verse has never changed. We are out of time. God desires above everything that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos. It's free to subscribe. And if you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org.